All right, welcome to Washing Dishes. Today we're gonna to make some beautiful tomato gazpacho and a really lovely cantaloupe and peach soup. Both chilled soups, beautiful seasonal summer ingredients. They're gonna be really lovely. Let's go for it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is employ a technique called a blanch. And to do that, we're gonna cut little X's in the bottom of our tomatoes and in the bottoms of our peaches, and we're gonna dunk them very briefly in boiling water, and that's going to release the skins so that they're easier to get into our soups later. I'm gonna use a paring knife for that, and I'm just gonna take the paring knife and make a small incision across the bottom, going one way and going the other way. Not going in very deep, just about a quarter of an inch. And then the same on the peaches, just going in a little bit across the bottom, and then again, making an X along the bottom. And now let's go check out how we blanch these. All right, so we've got a pot of boiling water and a bowl of freezing water, and this is what we're gonna to use to blanch our tomatoes and peaches. This is also known as a shocking technique. And for the peaches, we're gonna put them in our spider, drop them in, and they're gonna to need to be in the water for probably about 30 seconds to a minute. The tomatoes, same thing. They're only gonna to need to be in there for about 10 seconds. You can already see the bottom of the peach starting to open up. And if I turn over the tomato, you can see that one also starting to open up as well. Tomatoes ready. And that just goes straight into our, boil, our cold water. Peach looks good, so that's going to go back into our cold water as well. This one's going to take a few more seconds, so we're going to get through these and then we'll be back to continue on with our soups. Alright, so we've got our tomatoes and our peaches blanched. To get the skins off of these, it's pretty easy. You kind of just peel back on it with the paring knife and it slips right off. In fact, they were so easy, I forgot to film it while I was doing it. So we're going to set the peaches aside. I'm going to not gesture with my knife. We're going to set the peaches aside and get started on our gazpacho. We'll be back in a sec. All right, so let's get started on our gazpacho. Now, one of the things you have to be careful with gazpacho is it's a tomato soup, so you want it to be red. But a lot of the things that we want to add to it are green. And if you add green to red, you get brown. And this is a case where we don't want it to be brown. So to mitigate that, I'm going to peel my cucumber to get rid of the dark green skin. And then I'm gonna trim off the end, cut it into some big chunks, but I'm gonna reserve a little bit of it for something later. So here's my, these big chunks are like an inch and a half, two inches long. Because it's all going in the blender, we don't have to worry too much about our knife cuts right now. I am gonna trim a little bit of this off, this little piece, and save it for later. The rest can go into the blender. The rest can go into the blender. With the bell pepper, I'm gonna shave off one of the outsides. I'm gonna set this aside, and then I'm gonna do, I call it kind of unrolling a bell pepper. We can see the ribs and the seeds, so I'm going to slide my knife in and run it just inside the ribs of the pepper, and it kind of unrolls as you go, and you're left with just the core of the pepper left. This, again, big chunks, knife cuts don't matter for blended soups. Couple cloves of garlic. We'll trim off the root end. Give them a little crush. Give them a little once through. And then that goes into our blender as well. A lot of gazpacho recipes call for red onions. Uh, I'm gonna use a shallot 
they're really wonderful, a little bit more mild than a red onion. So it won't be quite as like cakey and spicy. We'll make up for that later. So I'm just gonna dip the tip, split it in half. You wanna make sure you peel it. You don't want onion peel in your gazpacho. And again, I'll get rid of the root ends. Couple of big pieces, straight into the blender. Jalapeno, because I left, because I went with a shallot instead of a red onion, I don't need to be as careful getting the seeds out of my jalapeno. So I'm just gonna split it in half. And then I'm gonna use a spoon and a pair of gloves to get the seeds out. Anytime I'm working the chilies, if I think about it beforehand, I try to put gloves on. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. And to get the seeds out, I'm gonna use the back end of the spoon and I'm going to run it along the inside of the ribs along one side, turn it, and do the same thing along the other side, and they lift right out. Break it into small pieces, blender. One more time, right along the edge, and then again along the other end to separate it. Big chunks. Good to go. Alright, so I'm going to clean up this stuff and then we'll finish with the tomatoes, the herbs. Alright, so I've got that cleaned up. We're going to go in with the tomatoes. So for the tomatoes, we're going to use a techni technique called a con cassé, which basically means peeled and seeded. So to do that, I don't need a paring knife. I need a chef's knife. You could use a paring knife for this. So I'm just going to split them into quarters. And then for each of those quarters, I'm going to take my knife and cut out the seed part before I throw the rest of the tomato into the blender. the seeds can be a little kind of tough and a little slimy in soups so I'm gonna end up putting those in a tomato sauce that's gonna get cooked and it'll they'll break down a little better so into the pool they go so we've got just enough space for some fresh herbs I've got a little bit of cilantro which is nice because the stems and the tops are the same flavor, but I only actually need the tops for this. So probably about that much. Some parsley, again, not a whole lot. We're, not, we're trying not to add too much green that this turns brown. And then this beautiful basil, I'm only gonna add a couple of the smaller leaves to the blender, but we'll use more of this later. All right, we'll get all that in. Couple juice of a couple of limes for a little brightness, acidity. I think I'm gonna start with one and then maybe add the other after it blends up and we taste it. And then we're gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. In fact, a fair amount. Black, some cracked black pepper, and of course, some kosher salt. All right. We'll use a spatula, press that down a little bit. Make sure all the liquid gets down to the bottom. Okay. 
and then we'll pop the lid on and give it a spin. that other bit of lime juice. And I think I also want a little bit more olive oil. One more taste. Mm, that looks better already. Beautiful. That's what I like. Bright, vegetal, tastes like tomatoes, tastes like other vegetables, not too salty, right on the spot. I'm going to go get this out of the blender and then we'll come back and we'll get on the peach and cantaloupe soup. See you in a sec. All right, time to get on with the peach and cantaloupe soup. I've donned some gloves because this part's going to be sticky. We've got to get the peach flesh off of the pit, and they're a little slippy. So we're going to be very careful and take our knife and just kind of shave along the edges. And now once we've got a nice flat spot, it's a little bit safer, a little bit easier. We can just go around. And then the pit's in here, and we can just let that go. This can all go into our blender. And I'm going to get these other three taken care of. All right, let me just clean up, and then we'll get on to the next part. All right, so now we're going to break down the cantaloupe. First things first, we'll trim off one end. And then we'll have a nice flat. This can go away. And then we're going to come with our knife and follow the curve of the cantaloupe around. Oh, didn't go deep enough. Close, though. There we go. And once you've got the first, you can see how deep the... the Peel goes, so it's easier as you do it. All right, so now we can split it in half. We'll scoop out the seeds. And then we'll cut it into big chunks. Well, I guess all, it's all that fits. We'll see if we can fit this rest in later. Let's see. So we'll get rid of this. One sec. All right. So squeeze of lime. We'll give it a spin and then we'll get the cucumber and the rest of the cantaloupe in. Well, that's still remarkably full. I guess we're going to have to do this in two batches. So we'll get this out into the bowl. Get the rest of our cantaloupe in. And then we'll peel our cucumber. Oh, let me trim the end. And then we'll peel our cucumber. Perfect. 
and then we'll add a little bit of this back to kind of get it going. Mmm, that's a good start. Alright, so that's nice and smooth. We'll add it in to the rest of our soup. Wow, that's a lot. Nice, excellent. I assure you, it will not go to waste. Give it a stir to mix it together. Try not to lose the spoon. This is definitely going to need some salt. But we're going to skip the pepper because it doesn't need it and it wouldn't look good in there anyway. Give it a stir to combine everything and then give it a taste. Mm, needs more salt. There we go. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to put this away for a minute. We're going to make some garnish for it, and then I'll be right back. All right. So we're going to make a quick little garnish for the uh, cantaloupe and peach soup. We're going to use some plain Greek yogurt, some maple syrup, and some lime. I'm going to start with half. I probably... Probably didn't expect my mic to die right there, but you know, these things happen. So we're just going to roll with it with some voiceover. Um, as you can see, I'm adding the lime and whisking together. I'm talking here, but I'm basically just explaining what I'm doing. Um, you just want this to get to like a nice, like not super thin consistency, but enough that it'll sit on top of the peach soup without like sinking all the way in. So you want it kind of like drizzle, uh, like a drizzling consistency, something like that. Um, I did end up using both halves of the lime, um, mostly to thin it out, but also because it balanced the sweetness of the maple syrup really well. Um, so you're really just whisking it up and then salting it to taste. Whisk go. I don't know why I took this long explaining that, but in the video, but here we are. And then I'm going to taste it. It needs a little more salt, which I knew going in because everything needs more salt going in. And this should be good. And then obviously, since my mic died during this clip, I'm going to be voicing over the remaining clip, but I'm sure you'll enjoy that. All right, so now we need to make some garnish because if you're gonna make something, you should make it look pretty. So what I'm doing here is a technique called chiffonade where you kind of stack up the herbs and roll them up and then you slice them as thin as you can possibly get them. Um, obviously being very careful and this is one of those things where both the technique and the product have the same name. Um, it's basically just tiny, thin little ribbons. And then we're going to do a cut on the cucumber, the jalapeno, and the red pepper that's called a brunoise. And a brunoise is just a very, very small dice. It's about one eighth of an inch on each side. It shows up in a lot of like super fine dining, plating, uh, and cooking. It, if you're cooking at home, just try to make them small cubes uh, that are nice and even. You can spend a long time getting your knife cuts perfect, um, but safety is more important. So. Try to get them nice and pretty, but don't cut yourself doing so. Also, this is garnish. If you're just having a snack of some soup, just eat your soup. You can see I didn't remember to put on gloves for chopping the jalapeno here, but since I'm not touching it that much, it probably won't be an issue. And in fact, it was not an issue. Uh, spoilers from Editor Wash. But again, I'm just 
slicing sticks as thin as I can get them and then keeping them nice and tightly bundled up as I cut cubes as thin as I can get as small as I can get them and then as you'll see once we've got the <clears throat> once we've got the pepper all chopped up we'll start plating All right, so now that it's time for plating, I'm just going to grab the jars that I put the soups in, and we're going to start with the gazpacho. That's about six, eight ounce, six or eight ounces of soup into the bowl. I've got these nice, like, wide, kind of shallow bowls, but you could plate this in anything where it's going to look, where you think it'll look pretty. Um, and I, I'm probably explaining that to the camera right now. Um, but what we're going to do is basically take each of the pieces of garnish that we've made and just kind of arrange them attractively across the soup. I'm starting with the peppers because they're bright red. They look the same as tomatoes cut up. And then I'm kind of creating little patches of them. When we're plating in a restaurant, we call this technique controlled chaos to make it sound kind of fancy, but really I'm just scattering things across the bowl in an organized manner instead of just kind of tossing them at random like you would sprinkle salt or herbs or something. Um, I don't want them to be super organized, but I also want them to have, want the patches to each have a little bit of each of the items. And then with the little threads of basil, I'm kind of stretching those across the top of the soup because they'll float and they just add a really nice pop of that like bright, like deep, deep green color. And then to finish it off, I'm going to drizzle it with a fair amount of olive oil, probably a couple of tablespoons. Um, and that's just kind of in a nice little drizzly, swirly fashion. And then there's our beautiful tomato gazpacho, bright, fresh, herby, veggie, veg, veg, vegetable e. I don't know, but you get the idea. Um, and then we're going to go in and the plating for the cantaloupe and peach soup is a little less complicated. Um, I'm going to use about the same amount of soup. You, this was supposed to be two clips, but I'm just going to talk over it. Um, so the cantaloupe and peach soup, again, about six to eight ounces. Um, and we're going to use, uh, we're going to spoon a few dollops, uh, of this yogurt sauce that we made. It's delicious, really beautiful. Um, and we're just going to, again, kind of controlled chaos, but this time we're going to do a much more organized pattern. I'm going to kind of drip it around in a circle. I'm not super worried about keeping the spacing even, although I did get the spacing pretty even. Um, but we're just going to drip it in a circle and then a little dollop in the middle. And we're going to top that with a little bit of the basil. And then we'll have two absolutely gorgeous, cold, seasonal, beautiful, delicious summer soups. Um, ready to go. And these will keep in the fridge for a week or so. Um, I took them to my family, uh, 4th of July party, but yeah, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your time zone. And I hope you try these recipes at home. Thanks.